Pranam Sadhguru. My name is Kapil Dev Behel. Okay. Um, in our quest for a better life, uh, growth and uh, quality of life, human beings are depleting natural resources. Um, we hear of younger generation blaming this generation for dwindling uh, the planet of uh, ecology, environment. Do you believe that human beings are um, heading towards water wars and disaster before we come out from the brink or do you have faith in human ingenuity? ingenuity? This is a… Uh, see, we must understand this. We are talking about all kinds of things. Right now, they are negotiating hard in Paris <laughs> where India and the other countries uh, which are called as the basic countries, which uh, Essentially, this is an idea that we've been talking about for the last twenty years. I've been speaking about this at various forums, saying that let's talk per capita division of consumption and carbon footprint. If we do that, in India we hardly have a footprint because most people are living in shacks, they're not consuming really anything, they're not leaving a carbon footprint. If the man disappears tomorrow, he's not left a footprint, all right? But they want a different kind of thing, this is a deal which will has to be hard negotiated, that's happening. Leaving this aside, what you are trying to ultimately do is to curtail human aspiration. You will not succeed, believe me. There are people I know in California homes, uh, earlier they were driving Prius, now they're all into Tesla, but in their garage they got two Ferraris <laughs> or they got a big SUV. Okay? This is when they go to the office, when they go to social gatherings, they want to be seen in an electric car. When they go out with the family, they want to ram a six-cylinder car, all right? So I'm saying you cannot curtail human aspirations. The best thing is to curtail human populations. At the beginning of twentieth century, we were 1.6 billion people. Today we are 7.2 billion people. In India, in 1947, we were 33 million people. Today, we are 1.2 or 1.25 billion people. So, three times, four times we've multiplied. We are nice, but we're too many. We need to understand this <laughs> There is only that much human life that the planet can sustain. And above all, because of technological prowess that we have today, we are consuming probably what ten thousand men would consume a thousand years ago. One man, I'm saying. One human being is consuming what ten thousand human beings would consume a thousand years ago. So when this is the case, the simplest thing is we must project or plan for a less population in the future. But right now, United Nations predicts that by 2050, 2050, we will be 9.6 billion people. By 2075, we'll be 12.1 billion people. I want you to just imagine your life on this planet. You and me may not be here, but if this projection becomes a reality, our children and their children do what you want, they cannot live well. But anyway, if we do not consciously control this, nature will do it to us in a cruel way. It's not that it, we will be allowed to simply spawn like this, Something will happen, all right? Something will happen that we don't know how to handle and cruel ways of things will happen. But the very pride of being human is, we can do what we want consciously. It is something we need to take up, every world leader has to take this up. The leadership on the planet, in this Paris meetings of going on talking about how much will you consume, how much will I consume, what do you have to do, why don't we say by 2050, we will be four billion, not 9.6 billion. Why not? All you have to do is, sir, that you should not reproduce. People are talking about the economic dividend of having a young population. Definitely it is true, right now we have, we have to take advantage of that. But this uh, was a few years ago in uh, 2006 when we were at Davos. There were a whole lot of union ministers and others, they were all gloating, we are the youngest nation, we are the youngest nation. I asked a simple question, where are the old people? They said, no, no, we are the youngest nation, that is okay, but where are the old people? In India, people don't get old, they die soon. That is why we are the youngest nation, you better know that. We can make a… take advantage of the situation now, 
but we can't gloat about it. It's not something that we created, it is something that's unfortunately happened to us. Because in 1947, the average life expectancy of an Indian was 28 years. Today it's come to 64, that's average. But I'm telling you, if you divide urban and rural, urban may be around 70, rural is around 50. 50 is not a time to die for a man.